trout rods, salmon rods, striper rods, helmet rods, downrigger rods, lead core rods, spinning rods, and more. If you want a high quality, high performance rod that won't let you down out on the water, go to fishhuntshoot.com and check out our selection of high quality, high performance fishing rods. Oh, he's fire. Okay, this was 52 feet deep. Um, we, were, we started out deep, wasn't working. There's a lot of fish out deep, but we weren't able to hook them. So we moved inshore, we started working these points here. Um, we were about 75 feet of water, about 52 feet deep. This is on one of our minnow tubes and one of our uh, fisheye dodgers. It's a nice fish. Now he wants to jump, and you'll notice I'm keeping this low rod angle. I don't want him jumping, because uh, I don't want to lose him. This I want to put him in the smoker, so we'll see if we can get him within net range here. He's 40 feet back. I saw him flash back here. Looks like a nice fish. Feels like a nice fish. And uh, just got to be patient here. Wes is steering the boat. He's started us out into deeper water, so we're not going to have any drama with hitting the bank. And here he comes, 30 feet, 20 feet. He's taking it nice and easy. Oh, yeah, nice king. Got that treble hook on there, so hopefully we got him pretty good. We'll see. There we go, whoa! Nice fish! <laughs> I could have got him quicker if my arms were longer. <laughs> well, he wasn't going anywhere. See the hook right here. Oh. There he is. Minnow tube, and look how well I had him hooked. Look at that. He's got teeth. But look at that hook. It's just buried in the corner of his mouth. He was, no way he was getting off there unless he, he broke the line or something. Well, all right, we're off to a we're off to a rip roaring start here at uh, Lake Oroville. So I'm going to show you how we're running our tubes today, and you know I don't care what you're running for king salmon, you're ahead of the game if you're using some kind of natural bait with your hoochies, with your tubes, whatever. So what but I'm here's what I'm using on the tubes. I took a couple anchovies last night. I filleted them. I stripped up the fillets. So there you go, nice shiny piece. It's got, it's got minimal meat on it, and that salt really dries them out and keeps them tough. So what I do, I just take my tube, tube right here, it's got a red treble in it, number eight treble. Take one point of that treble, doesn't matter which one, and just run it through the, the wide end of that strip of anchovy, and if you've salted them, it's, it's, it's a pretty tough piece of meat. I put that on there like so, that's right there and I have a uh, I'm running the six inch fisheye dodger and this is about two and a quarter blade lengths behind the blade and it's giving it that nice stop start action so that's what we're using super simple but super effective Shad tubes minnow tubes soft plastic grubs get serious about trout and landlocked king trolling with serious soft plastics from the fish hunt shoot production store Hi guys Kel Kellogg here if you've been watching the channel long, you know I love fishing with all kinds of lures, whether I'm throwing, you know, a Senko for black bass, trolling spoons or flies for trout and kings, or from out in the ocean dropping jigs for lingcod. I love artificials, but I also love to use natural baits. Sometimes I use natural baits whole, sometimes I use pieces of natural bait, and sometimes I use natural bait to tip my lures. And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. I was going through my freezer. I found some natural bait in there that was kind of on the edge. I have a giant mackerel here, just like that. I was going to use that for a whole lingcod bait, but I haven't been out lingcod fishing with the whole with the whole COVID thing going on. And when I get ready to go lingcod fishing, I'll get some fresh mackerel. But uh, I'm going to do something with that today. I found some tray bait herring, just like that. Um, I am going to cut these up and prepare them to be mooched or trolled as whole fillets. And, you know, as an aside, if you are fishing at a lake that has kokanee and big trout and you can roll whole um, 
natural bait like that. You can't use natural bait whole at all the lakes, so be sure to check the, the rigs. But if you're at a place that has kokanee, but also has large trout, that is a dynamite bait. Those small herrings just like that to, uh, to run whole. It looks like a little kokanee and uh, you could catch some epic fish on those. But anyway, I'm gonna end up filleting these and preparing these for mooching baits and for, for whole, you know, trolling baits. And finally, I've got a bunch of kind of freezer burned tray bait anchovies here. I'm gonna uh, fillet these, strip them up, and uh, make you know little little pieces of tipping bait that I'm gonna put on tubes and grubs, flies and spoons when I'm out targeting those landlocked kings or rainbow trout in a place that has a lot of bait fish like Folsom, even at Collins where there's a lot of bait fish in the water, it can really pay dividends for you to tip your spoons and lures with a little piece of natural bait. If the fish are a little tentative, they come in, they can smell that natural bait, they get a little taste of it, and that encourages them to keep on hitting and to get that lure deeper in their mouth. And the result is I hook more fish and I hook more fish deeper in the mouth, which means I land more of the fish I hook. So today, I thought I would kind of walk you through how I process the bait, how I prepare it, and how I store it. I've got a table set up over here. This is going to be kind of a, a wonky type of a video because I'm going to be talking, but the camera is going to be filming down at the table at what I'm doing. But uh, I think this is going to be valuable for you guys. If you want to elevate your game, you need to integrate natural baits into your presentations. Even if you're a hardcore lure guy, it really pays to integrate some natural baits you know, into your approach. It's gonna cause you to catch more fish and more bigger fish throughout the course of the year. And what do we wanna do? We wanna catch more and bigger fish. Let me turn this camera around. I will uh, get my big bowl of bait on the table here and we'll get started. Let me show you the other supplies. I can't even talk. Let me show you the other supplies I have. So I got my big bowl, I got my bait right there. And this bait, I set it out this morning, it was frozen. It's, it, you don't want it totally thawed. You don't want it totally frozen. You want it a little firm. It's just easier to work with that way. So in addition to the bait in my big bowl, I have here a box. This one's been around for a while. Got wet on the outside. I've got a box of rock salt. It's non-iodinized rock salt. It's kind of used for making ice cream right there. And I have a little grinder of Mediterranean sea salt. Any sea salt will do. You don't need the grinder kind, but you don't want iodinized salt. That will cause your bait to turn black. So I've got this, this salt, which I'm gonna grind, you know, into a, a somewhat coarse grind. I've got the rock salt, which I'm gonna use whole. I've got a nice sharp fillet knife. Of course, a cutting board. And finally, Got a few Ziploc bags where I'm ultimately going to put the bait. Let me turn this camera around and we'll get started. Now I warned you, this was going to be kind of a weird angle. Got my cutting board here, my knife out. Let's start off with these herring. A few of them on the board here. And, uh, you know, nothing fancy. I'm just going to, I'm just going to fillet them. I think that's all the herring. Oh, looks like there's a couple more. There we go. There's all our herring right there. Oop, anchovy got in there by mistake. Yep, those are all herring. So just take them, just pretty standard, go in right behind the gill just like that. Just a standard kind of a kind of a fillet. Follow that, that spine right on down. Take it off just like that. Flip him over, same thing. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, just just like so, and as you can tell, with these smaller bait fish, it's nice to have a very sharp knife. So, there we go, just like that. Now these baits are great to put on a double hook rig if you're, if you're targeting those landlocked kings at Oroville or Folsom or wherever. Put these on a double hook rig and troll them behind a six or eight inch dodger they can be absolutely dynamite. I have a section uh, about 14, 15 inches long of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader material. Yeah, it's heavy line. I've got it tipped with two 
fairly large number four octopus hooks and I've got them uh, snelled real close together. So that's the business end. Take the top hook on your leader, the one closest to the dodger, because you're going to run this behind that dodger, and go back maybe, oh, perhaps a quarter inch or less. About a hook gap, I guess. Never really thought about it like that. Go back about a hook gap and just pin that through from the meat side right up through the shiny side. Now take the other hook, kind of figure out where it, where it wants to sit on that fillet naturally, pass it through the fillet as well. So I think that's going to be real comfortable right about there. Right about there. Do the same thing. Pass it all the way through. Get it positioned like so. So there we've got the fillet. We've got both hooks in it. Doesn't really matter where the hook points lay. None of that matters. Doesn't matter how straight that is. Doesn't matter if it's bent. Can be on there anyway. Clip that on behind your dodger. Just like that. There's your dodger. There's your fillet. That's it. Very good baits. Not a lot of guys use herring in our lakes, but they should. The, the kings love them. The trout love them. And uh, you catch some very big fish just on a fillet of herring working behind a dodger. Okay, so there are our fillets. Um, got them all meat side up. Just like that. And I'm just going to go ahead put a nice coating of salt on them. Like so. That salt's going to do a couple things. It's going to pull moisture out of the fillets and it's going to toughen them up. It's also going to add a, a flavor to them. Fish just tend to like salty baits. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do with these, is I'm going to take these guys, I'm going to put them in a bag. Take the Ziploc bag. I'm just going to drop them into the Ziploc, just like that. And I'm going to leave these in the refrigerator overnight. And then I'm going to put them right back in the freezer. Put that like that. And I'm actually going to take and put a little, a little, a little extra, a little extra salt into the bag, like so. Get as much of the as much of the air out of the bag as I can. Zip that shut. Shake them around a little bit. Make sure, they got a nice nice coating of salt on them, just like that. Now I'll leave this in the freezer overnight. Let that salt absorb as much moisture as uh, as it can overnight, and then right back in the freezer it goes. And I've got strip bait for either mooching or trolling behind a dodger ready to go. I grab that on the day of the fishing trip, keep it in my cooler, and uh, I have just perfect baits. They're going to last me all day. They're nice and tough. The kings are going to absolutely love them. Okay, so here we have our anchovy fillets. I filleted them the same way as I filleted the herring, except now we're going to take and we're going to cut them into little strips, just like that. Little strips for tipping hoochies, spoons, um, whatever. You just want the strips thin. And uh, next we're going to give them the salt treatment and uh, we'll bag them up. I'll be right back when I get these all stripped up. Okay, so I've got all those anchovy fillets. They're all stripped up. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to apply some, some fine salt to them like so. And these baits, you know, I'm going to put these all in one bag. As long as you keep them cool when you're out on the water, you can reuse these. You can reuse these for three or four trips because that salt is really going to toughen them up. And uh, they're going to retain a lot of their flavor. Just like that. Can't really use too much salt in these little guys. Because they are thin. They're very delicate. So you want these to really toughen up. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put in, well, not that much. 
just for good measure, I'm going to mix in just a little bit of a little bit of rock salt, like so. Probably about a teaspoonful, tablespoonful rather. And we'll go ahead. We'll take these. We'll put all these into a bag. like that and again I'm going to leave these in the refrigerator overnight we'll let that salt draw out a lot of the moisture a little more salt in here just for just for good measure So, squeeze out quite a bit of the air, mix that up, just like that. Leave those in the refrigerator overnight, we'll get them in the freezer, and we will have top-rate um, anchovy strips for tipping, you know, spoons, tubes, whatever. So, set those aside. Now, here's that big mackerel. Man, that was a... At one time, that was a beautiful lingcod bait, but he didn't get used for lingcod fishing, so I'm going to convert this guy into catfish bait. I'm going to do that just like this. Going to fillet it, just like so. Just follow that spine right on down. Right down to the tail, just like so. Just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. like that there's our two fillets now I'm gonna cut these into bait sized chunks it's like that like that like that like that same thing over here like that, something like that, something like that, right there. Now, put a little bit of the granulated salt on here. That'll stick to it really nice. And we're gonna take these guys, we're gonna put them right into the uh, right into the ziplock right here, just like so. Somebody's calling me, but I don't want my my phone to smell like filleted mackerel, so I won't answer that. I'm just gonna let it ring. So we'll put that in there like so. And then final thing, I'm gonna take some rock salt. In this case, I'm gonna put a lot more. I'm gonna put about I don't know. That's probably about a quarter cup or so right there. I'm going to toss that in the mix and then squeeze that air out of there, just like that. Shake that around. Shake that around just like that. Toughen that up. So there you have it, guys. I had some freezer burn bait, um, stuff that I was going to have to throw away. It wasn't very useful for anything anymore. I certainly couldn't have rigged those anchovies or those herring up and, and uh, ran them whole. They were just kind of leathery and kind of burned on the outside. Same thing with the mackerel. When I get ready to go link out fishing, I'll get some fresh mackerel. But I've got three very usable bags of bait here. I've got my mackerel catfish bait right there. I'm going to leave that in the fridge overnight. Let that mackerel toughen up, and I'm going to toss it in the freezer, and I'm, I'm good to go. Next time I go to Folsom or Collins, and I think I want to throw out a catfish bait, i got a nice bag of mackerel ready to roll. And if I take these out, as long as I keep them in the cooler, even if they thaw out, if I keep them in the cooler with that salt solution on there, I can bring them home, and I can reuse these for three or four trips. The same goes for this other stuff. I've got my anchovy tipping bait right there ready to go. I've got enough tipping bait there for two, three trips minimum. 
Got a nice amount of salt in there. That stuff looks great. Again, refrigerator for 24 hours, back into the freezer. And uh, finally, I've got my herring fillets right here. And these are great for two things. You can put a double hook rig, as I said, run them, you know, two and a half Dodger links behind a six or eight inch Dodger, very effective bait. Or if, you know, if the trolling bite's not happening and you get some marks going on, you could drop these down, you can mooch them whole. Again, I use a double hook rig and uh, they are dynamite. I've caught kings on those at Shasta, at Folsom, um, pretty much all over the place. So anyway, very effective mooching baits and uh, all from stuff that was going to have to be thrown away. So if you're not integrating natural baits into your into your fishing repertoire, into your trolling repertoire, you should get some tray bait. I always start out with tray bait. I don't buy that cheap anchovy stuff in the bag unless I'm going to use it as chum or something in the Delta. You know, spring for the real stuff, get the tray bait anchovies. They're all perfect. Get some of those small tray bait herring. They're all perfect too. You could troll them whole, but when they start getting freezer burn, when they start getting a little funky, you could process them and kind of give them a second life. And with that salt solution on there, as I, as I showed you, it's just very simple. You can use these over multiple trips. The key is when you take them out in the boat, you want to keep them in a the cooler, keep them near ice. Pretend they're night crawlers. Keep them cool, keep the bait cool and comfortable. It'll treat you well. Take it home, what's left, put it back in the freezer, and uh, you can use it for a few trips. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I hope that uh, that tip helps you. I hope it encourages you to start integrating more and more natural bait in, into your, you know, your fishing approaches. I know there's a lot of guys out there that just say, man, I just want to fish artificial lures. Well, if you're doing that, you're not catching as many fish as you could. You should be tipping those, those tubes, those spoons, stuff like that with that anchovy skin. And uh, don't be afraid to run those fillets. And uh, catfishing's a lot of fun too. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm always, always excited to be talking fish in here. Um, whether it's out on the water catching fish or preparing bait here in my backyard. I'm signing off for now. If you would like to check out my full array of fishing gear, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I got a whole bunch of chores to do. It's Saturday morning, so I got to get cracking here. Um, I'm going to throw these back in the fridge, clean up this mess, and uh, get after it. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys. Thanks for all the support, and I'll see you soon.